We on, Jai? Yep. Well, good evening and welcome everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. I know it's school holidays and a four day long weekend ahead, so I um, appreciate everyone coming out, especially Leash and children with a big trip ahead of you. Um, we'll just, uh, if you just bow your heads, I'll open with a word of prayer. Our gracious and loving Father in heaven, great and holy is your name, we come before you as your children, as part of the great promises that you have promised to your servant Abraham, and we thank you that we can come together tonight to consider these wonderful promises that you have made to us and to all mankind. And Father, we pray for a blessing upon this evening that we might be uplifted, encouraged and and enthused with the wonderful hope that you've given us. Father, we pray that you might be with all those who are travelling at this time, those who are away, that you might keep them safe and that you might bring us all back together once again. So Father, we leave all things in your care praying that we might be in your kingdom soon with your son, who, who we pray to you through now. Amen. Okay, for um, uh, Paul's um, talk tonight, he has asked that we take our reading from Genesis chapter 12 and reading the first 10 verses. So Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 10. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. 
and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran. And they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Moriah. And the Canaanites were there in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. With that as introductory, we'll ask uh, Paul to come forward and speak to us about the promises to Abraham. Okay, thanks Matt for that. Now, I want to start off, start off with a question. And the question is, who has been promised the world? Who has been promised the world? Levi, I know you know. Who has been promised the world? I'm not going to go until you get, get this answer, so we could be here all night. Who has been promised the world? Yep. Abraham, excellent, well done. And who else has been promised the world? Well done. Yeah, Asher? Yes. Okay, all right. And who else has been promised the world? Who else? So we've got Abraham, we've got Jesus. Who else? Who else has been promised the world? Surely someone knows. Who else has been promised the world? Come on, someone knows. Abraham, Jesus, and everyone. everyone. Okay. All right. Let's look, let's see if we can prove that. Let's turn over to Romans chapter 4 and verse 13. And um, we're not going to be looking up too many passages tonight because I'll have most of them up on the screen, but I want us to look at these passages here in Romans. In Romans chapter four and verse thirteen, then we're going to go to um, then we're going to go to um, to the Psalms. So Romans chapter four and verse thirteen it says there for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or his seed, and of course we'll find out later on that his seed is the Lord Jesus Christ, through the law but through the righteousness of faith. So we've proved the first part. Abraham and Jesus are going to be given the, um, the land, the, the, the earth, 
So let's come back now to Psalm 37 and see where we fit in. Psalm 37. Okay, verse 9. Psalm 37, verse 9. For evil do shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Verse 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight in themselves in the abundance of peace. So verse 22, for such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. And in verse 34, wait on God has promised all of us the world. So tonight is really about how we can inherit it what God wants us to do to inherit that land with Jesus and with Abraham. If we understand the promises to Abraham, we will understand God's plan and purpose with the earth. And most of all, we will understand God's purpose with us. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 5, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of of his will. So, that's how important this subject is tonight. God has chosen us in Christ before the foundation of the earth. Before even God made this earth, God knew all those people who were going to be in his kingdom. Now, before we, um, before we go on, we just want to have a, a quick look at Abraham. We want to look at who he was and where he came from and that sort of thing. And then we're going to go into these promises that God made to him. Now, apart from um, Moses, no other Old Testament character is mentioned more times in the New Testament than Abraham. The life of Abraham takes up a good section of the, uh, of, of the Genesis record um, and uh, he lived roughly from uh, 2000 BC um, so he would have been years ago. That's a long time ago. So those promises that God made to him have been God's plan and purpose for the last 4,000 years. Now the life of Abraham takes, as I said, takes up a good section of, um, um, of, the, uh, of the Genesis narrative. It, it starts in uh, Genesis chapter 11 verse 26 and goes all the way through to Genesis chapter 25 and verse 8. Now, although we know a lot about Abraham, we know a lot about his, um, uh, his latter life, but we don't know much about his early life. Um, we first meet Abraham when he's 75 years old. Now, when you get to my age, you start to think, well, 75 is not that old. But uh, maybe it is for you younger ones. But, but he's 75 years of age at this time when he, first, when he was first given those promises. Now, in Genesis 